Hello, my name is Julia Mitchellmore and I am a front-end engineer in the video group at Canva. Today, I'll be going through CSS preprocessors, less SAS and more SCSS. By now, you should have used CSS and also programming languages. So let's start with this question. Is CSS a programming language? We'll take this to ask whether it is Turing complete, of which there are a few definitions. But for now, let's say, does it suffer from the halting problem? Can we know if any given CSS will finish? The answer is no. CSS is not Turing complete, which means it isn't a programming language. But why? A classic request might be to add functions to CSS. Then you could decompose and reuse your CSS more easily. For example, I might have several different places I want to apply the same border thickness, but with a different color. That sounds like a good time to use a function. But making CSS Turing complete would be a problem. Browsers and users want CSS to be fast. There's all kinds of optimizations that browsers make to parse CSS. Also, if you want a programming language for the web, we already have JavaScript or WebAssembly if you're keen. Okay, fine. But we still have the problem of coping with large code bases of CSS. While plain standard CSS is fine for small projects, it's very easy to end up in a sticky mess in a large project. There are some CSS features that can help. CSS variables can reduce the problem of 200 odd slightly different shades of gray all over the code base by creating one reusable variable throughout. The calc function allows us to do maths on measures like pixels and percentages. That's a great start, but we can also use tools called CSS preprocessors to give us even more functionality. A preprocessor turns something we have into the expected input of another system. In this case, we want to turn something with more features than CSS into regular standard CSS. This could be a Node.js library or a command line tool or built into the web framework you're using. Here are some popular choices. SAS is an extension of CSS and is written in Dart, available in NPM. PostCSS is technically not a preprocessor, but is often used as one. It is actually a tool for transforming CSS into other CSS. Less and Stylus are two other popular CSS preprocessors, both are JavaScript based. Since SAS is the most popular, let's jump into that. SAS has two syntaxes and you can pick either, but you can't mix them. If you hate curly brackets and semicolons, then you'll love the SAS syntax because it doesn't use these. Alternately, SCSS is a strict superset of CSS, so it's often easier to get a grip on. Any CSS is valid SCSS. But whichever input syntax you choose, the output of SAS is always standard CSS. I'll be using SCSS syntax in the rest of the examples while still referring to it as SAS. And actually, here's our first feature of SAS, variables. You can have variables in standard CSS as well, but in SAS, variables are scoped and not global like they are in CSS. I just said scoped, so let's look at what that means. Usually when you run the SAS tools, you run them on a directory. SAS then converts all the SAS files it finds into CSS. But what if we don't want that? Partials allow us to make reusable style sheets we can import, but that don't generate an output style sheet of their own. You might have a partial containing all your brand colors or your grid system measurements. You can then make use of that partial in any other style sheet. 
SAS is currently in the process of changing their import syntax from at import to at use. We're referring to the newer at use syntax in our snippets. Next up is nesting. Nesting is probably one of the handiest features of SAS and most CSS preprocessors. This lets you structure your style sheet much more like your HTML. You can easily make specific selectors and nesting also helps reduce abuse of the bang import annotation in CSS. For example, here you can see how the nested SCSS resembles the HTML snippet and how it is then pre-processed to become normal CSS. But of course, nesting can be overused. So as always with CSS, make your selectors just as specific as they need to be. Mix-ins are a feature that let us parameterize styles. Back when new CSS feature used browser vendor prefixes, mix-ins were really handy if you needed to apply, for example, the same gradient across all browsers. Rather than writing the same thing in four or five different syntaxes, you could just pass in the colors to a mix-in that handled them for you. Here is an example of a mix-in that wraps anything you want to just happen on retina screens. If you're looking at this code and thinking, wait, isn't that a browser prefix? Yes, yes it is. And didn't I imply that they were gone? Well, they aren't quite gone. Thanks, Safari. But mix-ins are also very useful for all sorts of cases where you want to avoid copy pasting the same but slightly different code. As I mentioned earlier, CSS has a function for doing some maths called calc. Calc is actually pretty cool because it lets you do calculations based on live values. So you can add up pixels, percentages, and rem values, but it only gives you add, subtract, multiply, and divide. With SAS, you can floor, modulo, square root, cosine, and even use pi and e. There's also SAS functions to operate on colors, such as making them lighter, darker, or more transparent. Here in the top example, we're using the SAS math.div method to divide grid values. And below, we're scaling a given color to be 40% more transparent. So why should you use a CSS preprocessor in your next project? If your project is large enough that you want to use a framework like React or Angular, then adding a preprocessor to that mix just makes sense. Plus, there's a fair chance that if you start with a template project, the preprocessor will be included anyway. A preprocessor also makes it easier to decompose your style sheets to match your framework components, adding style to your MVC model view controller pattern. Preprocessors add lots of extra features, but you don't have to use any of them. If you're using SCSS syntax with SAS, you can just write plain old CSS and that's valid SCSS. Then when you need a little bit more, SAS is there for you. Plus, SAS and LESS and POST CSS have even more features than we've covered here. You can make custom functions, loops, and other control flows, use ampersand to refer to the parent class, there's debug decorators, and so much more. So with that, go forth and be stylish. Thanks so much for joining.